especially at the Division three level, you're going to see more regional and local stuff. The the uh, the uh, the number of states that a college may have to travel, they may have a cap on the number of miles. Whereas at the Power Five, the really big conferences of the Division one level, that budget is a little is a bit deeper, and they can kind of get out and travel wherever they need to. Okay, so the to recap, it's Division one and two and NAIA that give money, but all these other schools can give you money, but not athletic. It's either based on other talents, merit award, or need-based grants. Yeah, so Division I, um, FBS, and, and FCS, definitely, you get money. And for those uh, who don't know what that is, can you tell so our it, listeners? So at the Division I level, there are, um, there are schools that are, have a really clear distinction in the number of students that attend and the level of competition that those schools participate in. So um, at the Division I level, I guess it really doesn't matter. There are athletic scholarships that are awarded, and that value may vary. At the Division II level, you can receive an athletic scholarship. It will not be as much as it is at the Division I level, only because of the size of the school and the budget and the level of competition. At the Division Three level of the NCAA, there is zero athletic scholarship money. However, colleges will uh, create uh, merit opportunities for students to attend. Then there's the NAIA, um, and that generally has two levels of division. They do offer money, and that value also is a sliding scale depending on the sport and how quickly those, those coaches or programs feel that the student-athlete will impact their program. So there is some money that is offered there. And then, believe it or not, at some junior college levels, um, programs are find themselves in a position where they can support some students. It may be in books. It may be in meals. It may be in, in travel to and from school. But some places are actually able to support kids uh, in you know, providing what they need fundamentally for their programs. That's the reason why to shop around, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So I walk in your door. You, you, you tell me your philosophy. You check where I am, how much I'm hungry for this opportunity. And what are like the, maybe the first top three or five steps do I need to take to um, have a coach notice me? Well, it's really, uh, it's really about generating exposure. And so the process what I try to do with, with student athletes and their families that come in is try to get a pulse on where they are and what they've done. Um, and if you start in, from scratch, then we need to kind of generate some list based on your values, the things that are important to you and the family, and what your bandwidth is. Are you, are, are you not want to leave California, or are you ready to go as far away as Australia? Right. Um, and if that's the case, then okay, you know, we're, we're certainly attack it that way and approach it that way. So we, we want to find out where your values are and what your bandwidth is. And then after that, um, have some hard conversations about where you are academically and athletically. You know, are, are you a strong academic candidate? Are you a good academic candidate? Because all of those things are going to influence, you know, when you get down to the bottom of it, it's going to influence the type of school that you apply to. You know, if you want to apply to an Ivy League school, but you do not have an Ivy League GPA, it's going to make it very, very difficult to get in, which will cause frustration in the process. So we want to be as we want to create a broad net, uh, net of opportunities, but we also want to do it in a way that's relatively strategic where we aren't wasting our time and energy in places we know are not going to happen. Right, right. So, so one is understanding what you want and what you don't want. What's the next step that a student should take? And we have to outreach. We've got to create lists based on those schools. And then we gotta, we gotta, we have to outreach to coaches and programs, and that can be now with social media. There's several ways to, to reach coaches, but um, email is certainly the the most direct way. And then through social media. Now, for coach, if you if it's your first introduction to a coach, then I would strongly suggest email with a phone call follow up. After that, after the coach kind of knows who you are, at least have some contact with you then you can kind of do some things on the social media side. But um, many coaches, uh, they, you know, you're, they're going to be coaching you, so you want to start as soon as you can building a relationship with those coaches and having conversations about things that are important. So no better way to do that than shoot an email to get started and follow up with a phone call. 
And then what if I'm one of those students, because I hear this a lot, I haven't heard back. And like, these are like five colleges that I really like. I love their program. But I did the email. I did the phone call. I reached out to their social media, sent it to the head coach, sent it to the recruiter. Just haven't heard anything. Yeah, and that's going to depend on a couple of different things. The first is your age. If you're a sophomore, um, coaches are not going to call you back right away because they technically cannot talk about recruitment technically until September 1st of that junior year. Sometimes, depending on the sport, as early as June 15th leading into junior year. So if you've not heard back from a coach and you're in that category, then it's not uncommon. Um, and I'd also say with where we are right now and socially with COVID, right, there's a, the coaches are being overwhelmed with outreach. So you are going to need some patience as well as some persistence because coaches are getting two to three times the number of emails and, and messages than they normally would at this particular time. So um, understanding that, it's really important that you have a, uh, are, are consistent with your message, um, that you do have some patience, and yet you, you figure out really um, pertinent reasons to outreach of which you want to, uh, you know, update and, and inform. So since you brought up, so on the date of this show, it's May 5th, 2020, um, and uh, there is a pandemic that all over the world is experiencing with COVID-19, and definitely um, sports is not... Um, is definitely impacted by that. So if I am a student athlete and I can't do practice outside of the house, I can't do those summer showcases, tournaments to kind of show my true abilities, what's a student athlete to do? Good question. And uh, there's several different things of of ways I would approach that. Um, Depending on your sport, depending on where you are and what access you have, you got to be creative at how you are continuing to build your skill level. Um, so if you're a speed-based uh, sport and, and you have an opportunity to work on that speed, then do it. Um, while you maintain your social distance, right? If, if right. you're a, a track runner that's in longer distances and you have an opportunity to get to a track or something like a track and have a family member film you from afar, do it. Um, if you are, you know, a, uh, a skilled sport athlete where you need to develop hand-eye coordination or your stick skills for lacrosse or your hand placement for football guys or your footwork for speed and agility, then create opportunities that are safe opportunities and get it on film. Film yourself running the ladder drills in front of the house. Um, you know, uh, maybe, maybe you film yourself or if you got an opportunity – to get to a pool, and I'm not suggesting hopping fences or uh, or knocking in doors, but, you know, coaches are going to want to know that, hey, this kid, despite our, our, our societal challenges right now, this kid has continued to work at being great at their particular sport by position. So while, while we're on a while, – while we're at halftime or we've hit the pause button right now, once we are able to go – it's going to be very clear who's been training, who's been developing their skills and their sports IQ, and who hasn't. And so what you want to do is you do your very best to get ahead of that so when it is go time, coaches are informed as to who you are and, you know, you, your skills are appropriate based on, on, on what's going on in society right now. Yeah, no, I've seen, um, especially on social media, right now Instagram's really popular. haven't seen too much on TikTok, but where athletes are showing their jump power, their workout routines. And often I've heard coaches communicate with me, oh, it's just, you know, the, 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 you know, there's specific skills to that. You know, it's not always about numbers, but they see potential, right? Um, you know, a lot of people, if anyone's watching The Last Dance, um, some of the back um, background stories were some people that um, were just, uh, I, I think it was Rodman who was just saw playing a, a sport and they and the college just recruited him. Well, now with the Internet and also maintaining social distancing it is a great way. And I think it really illustrates determination, which Absolutely. every coach loves. 
right? right. That, that's what's going to win games, right? Sometimes having that hunger that's out there. So um, any other things that um, during this COVID-19 uh, uh, for outreach or exceptions or, or if anything, what should their message be or outline their email or in case they do have a resume? What's something that they should highlight to be consistent while they're being patient, while they're still, you know, um, training individually at home? couple things with regards to outreach to coaches, and then the second piece would be what they can do on their campuses or in their neighborhoods and communities. Um, you want to, as a student athlete, be in a position where you feel like you're doing things that will separate you from the other 25 to 30 kids that they're going to offer a scholarship to in the coming year. What does that look like by sport? You know, if I was – a offensive lineman or a defensive lineman, and I'm sorry I keep using references to football. I was a head football coach for a while. It's in your blood. It's in your blood. It, it is. You know, and so if I was 300 pounds last season and moderately fast, and now I'm 280 fat, 285 pounds, and I'm fast, I'm going to get on a weight on a scale and show that, and I'm going to show some different clips that shows the differences in my speed. Um, you want to make sure you're doing what it takes to demonstrate your preparation moving forward. You know, how, are, how can you highlight your progress in your sport? So think about those things and be creative in how you put that together. You know, are you a, are you a distance runner? Are there, do you have friends or family members that are runners? Well, can you time a mile? Can you time a 1,600 and get that on film? Um, so doing things like that might uh, aid the recruiting process for that prospect. No, I think that's a great idea because even my husband's like, let's put up a big net in the backyard and, and just do some golf swings. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God, don't break a window. So, yeah, no, but there's always those great ways of doing that um, and that outreach. But if I'm a rising senior and it's near the end of, you know, mid or end, end of summer uh, and I haven't heard from a coach yet, and I've been mainly looking at Division One schools or the um, very uh, um, ex- um, exclusive Division Three schools. Should I be looking somewhere else? Absolutely. You want to keep your you want to keep your options as many options open as possible as long as you can. Um, I will say that things happen. Things happen in late April of senior year. Um, and the great story of one of one of our student athletes who that literally occurred for him four years ago, and now he's soon to graduate from college playing playing two sports actually. So you want options, and you want to keep as many open as you can for as long as you can, even if you started late. So if I'm a rising senior and I, I'm not getting a whole lot of exposure, or I haven't had a whole lot of um, um, calls back from coaches or emails back from coaches. You know, and coaches are coming by offices and not necessarily looking for me. Well, you, you want to a stay on their radar um, and continue to grow in your sport. Yeah, no, it's really important. And what has been your experiences? I know have my ten cents of student like, hey, I want to be a college athlete and I want to be an engineering major or a nursing major or a major that's very impacted, very lab heavy, meaning you have to be in the classroom doing lab work a lot. Um, right. Any words of wisdom for those students? First thing is with the colleges and the athletic programs that they are looking at, have a conversation with a coach. Find out from coach, A, um, what their recommendation is, B, whether or not there are other players on the team who are studying that specific major. And if so, can you get in contact with them? Because you want to find out what the reality is in juggling the academic work, the labs, and practice, and travel, um, how does the academic institution, do they shape schedules differently, and, and is it shaped such that it's doable for your sport? So if they're only offering lab sports during your season, that may not be congruent. That may not be a match. So the question then is, well, how would you make it up? Do they offer labs outside of your season and into the summer like, what do the summer months look like? Are there intercessions between the winter and the spring where a student-athlete might be able to make up a class or even as they get closer to senior year, travel abroad and study whatever they need to study for their particular subject, whether engineering or nursing? 
So having those conversations um, with Coach and the admissions rep at those colleges, I think,